Alright guys, BLM here back with a new video, and in this video we're back with another top 10 for Survivor US, this time talking about who I think are the top 10 most swap screwed players of all time. Now this will be a list ranking these players based on how screwed I feel like they were by the swap itself. I get screwed by the position that they were put in by the swap, not based on how good of a position they, they were necessarily in before the swap. That's where I'll also only be including players that were taken out after a swap, a while again i think you theoretically think of some examples of people that were screwed over by swaps and survived them i do still feel like the point of this list is to talk about those that were facing insurmountable odds so again because of that the likes of amber and all stars james and survivor china marty and survivor nicaragua vetus and blood vs water those people will not be included but also i will not be including split tribals but also i made the decision to not include split tribals into this list either again the post merge twist that splits the group into two and then they go to tribals individually for that and other related twists like the one that took out michelle Yi or the one that took out matt blankenship again those will not be represented in this list but with that let's talk about the honorable mentions here to which i do have a good chunk of so right here i'll be going through the honorable mentions in chronological order Starting off with Sarah Jones, someone that I do think gets swapped over into a position where she loses all of her allies, has no real chance at saving herself, but they're not really gelling with her new group. Again, someone that was screwed, but again, not enough to make it on. So a bit higher in contention is Jerry from Survivor All-Stars, where again, this might not be the common assumption because again, Jerry was swapped into a majority. However, she was largely swapped due to the fact that she was swapped over with Amber, which allowed for the entire situation to occur. Again, I do think that is unlucky, but again, it's more so just like direct way of her being screwed to where the initial tribe formation was actually one that seemed beneficial but it was simply just because of these very weird other circumstances that occurred that led to it not really working out for her next up you have someone like Bubba from Vanuatu who again goes from being at the top of his original tribe to being on the bottom immediately following that yeah I also feel like he's someone that again had some poor play and making him the target so again was not going to make the list Joel from Survivor Micronesia that was also in consideration but another one I think had some pretty poor play throughout the game where while I do think he gets pretty unfortunate in the position that he is in I think the domineering nature of his game is something that put this massive bullseye on him anyway. Jackie from Gabon is a major example here. One that I did think was going to make the list when I originally created it. However, I did think the situation was a bit too simple in her simply being swapped from a majority into a minority away from all of her allies. Again, it's bad. It's obviously her still being screwed, but it's not really this really excessive situation that really the top 10 are all in where, again, it just was not enough to make the very top of the list. Then you got someone like a Matt Bischoff in Survivor Care. Moen, which again follows the stereotypical trend of someone that was in a majority alliance gets swapped into a minority however this is more so even more standard situation of this of him being swapped into a minority simply because his tribe was down in numbers to where again obviously he got a bad swap but again not enough to be at the top of this list the Lexus maxwell is someone to mention here again someone that gets swapped away from all of her allies is the easy person out when trying to figure out who to vote off coming into the merge so at the same time again she also played poorly by leaking how close she was to the other beauties where again it is the most screwed over person that's a bit higher in contention here was caleb from game changers where i think this is kind of an understated swap screw of him being again screwed over by being swapped into a minority in a spot where he was in a decent position on his original tribe but also one where he's essentially taken out due to pre-game relationships the fact that he was so close to ty that made people be threatened by his action to where they wanted to separate them because of that to where Again, I think it's a situation where while he was swapped into the bottom anyway, I think naturally there would be this inclination to potentially take out Haley in that spot, but it ended up landing on him because of pregame to where again, I think that's him being slightly screwed, but again, not enough to be in the top 10. Also from Game Changers, I do also have to mention JT, same thing, getting swapped into a position where he loses all of his allies, even a more damning situation where he's literally swapped into a spot where he's the only member of his original tribe to where, again, he's pretty screwed there, yet also, again, he had some pretty poor play leading to his actual vote off to where, again, he had an idol, he didn't use it, also, again, he ends up leading to Malcolm's elimination, which was his only salvation, to where, again, he does poor play within it to where he's not the most screwed. And again, sadly, from Game Changers, also, I do have to mention Jeff Farner, where yes, Jeff Farner was screwed. Where while obviously he doesn't handle it well, and obviously his move of outing Zeke is purely despicable, I do feel like it's still an act of desperation that occurred because of how screwed he was, to where he was just in a spot where he had no real way out, to where, again, 
when purely assessing people on how screwed over they were, I do feel like he's at least in the conversation. I think a big shocker for me that someone that didn't make it on the top 10 ends up being Rourke from HHH, who I very much thought was going to make this top 10. She was actually pretty much number 11. Again, I think she is someone that is very screwed over. Someone that, in a very strong spot in their original tribe, was swapped over into a spot where they were the odd man out. Yeah, in reality, again, that should be a pretty good spot for them. For again, we had seen this in previous seasons, that the person that is the sole person swapped over with two other factions ended up being the swing vote. However, in this position, she's actually screwed because Ryan had a connection to Chrissy through his round one idol that essentially puts her right on the bottom because of that to where again i think it's definitely her being screwed however the reason she's not in the top 10 is because one i do feel like there was another option here in them taking out ally which or while i don't necessarily think it was the correct call i at least think it leads to more leeway here and that there were more ways out for her along with the fact that i do feel like her failure to pull over ryan is still a failure on her while ryan again had reason to work with chrissy it's not this end-all be-all especially when you had someone like jp also there as a potential target so again, i feel like she still had some outs even though again she's still pretty screwed next up we're moving on to ghost island where we have a decent amount of options here and we got brendan who i think was again in a power position at the top of his original tribe only to be swapped into a minority and even then is only taken out because of the notion of needing a safe vote it's not even like they actually wanted brendan out they just felt like he was the least likely to have an idol played on him to where again i think that's an unlucky situation but again not enough to be top 10 also again in a similar vein stephanie johnson same thing and swapped into a position where he was in a very powerful position on her original tribe gets swapped into the bottom though again like some people have already talked about i do feel like at least there were other options there she could have tried to get the vote onto jenna or michael that again i think at least there's some failing from her also again i'm gonna mention james Lim here who is someone that gets screwed over by his second swap in a spot where again he's swapped in kind of a double minority again first in the minority from his original starting tribe but then also in a minority from his second swap tribe where he's just the complete odd man out in that spot while also him coming from a very powerful position on the first swap tribe where he had really cultivated this group around him only for him to be isolated from that group in this swap to where again i think there are a lot of unlucky circumstances with him though again he didn't make the top 10 moving on the winners at war i am going to mention boston rob to where again boston rob's a weird case here where he's technically swapped into a majority i think he swapped into a bad majority where he swapped with adam and ben who he had bad relationships with where had he swapped with the likes of michelle or parvati or jeremy he would have probably had more leeway in those situations he literally swaps with like two of the worst people now i do think again he doesn't play it well i do think he still again tries to do the buddy system in a spot where it's never going to work but again i think that was just a move out of desperation of him recognizing the bad position he was in and at the one little moment where it seemed like he could have kept this together he was like screw it let's just try to make it a complete lockdown and again it doesn't work Work for him but again i think it's still a bad swap for him but again not enough to make it on the list and final mentions we're going to be talking about here are from survivor 45 so again i'm going to mention sean but again sean's obviously this weird case where obviously he wasn't properly voted out he wouldn't have been properly voted out yet again i will still say his initial predicament was one that seemed very difficult again him being swapped into his position where there are four rebas and he's the only outlier and again despite that i think he actually plays that round well until he quits to where again, it kind of nullified all that but again i at least want to mention him here the final mention I'm gonna have here is Brando, who I know at the time a lot of people were talking about how screwed he was. And to be fair, again, he was close to making this list. Yeah, I think he's another one that, again, he's not making the list because I do feel like there are other options. Where, again, yes, he is unlucky in the fact that he was in a very strong position on his original tribe, being a swing vote, only to be swapped away from his allies. But I think the damning thing for me is that he was actually swapped into an initial good position. Again, Kendra and Emily had a good relationship from the twist in episode one, where, again, that should have given him the favor and pulling over emily yet instead he actually loses that battle to drew and austin to where I, I do think it's the fact that he loses that battle which is one that he had the advantage in is something that leaves him outside of my top 10 but with that now let's get into the actual top 10 itself and the top 10 most swap screwed players in the history of the show let's start off at number 10 with one of the ogs one of the original victims of the swap at number 10 we do have Lindsay richter from survivor africa and again Lindsay was very close here again as i mentioned again the likes of Rourke the likes of Brando the likes of Jerry the likes of Caleb we're all very close to making this slot however I decided to go with Lindsay here particularly due to the fact that again at this point a swap was completely 
unexpected. This is the first time it ever happened. They had no reason to think that this was going to happen to where Lindsay is in a spot where she is in a very powerful position on her original tribe to where while she you know, was not the most liked person on that tribe, she still was in a massive majority and they had a 4-2 to two advantage by the time of the swap, only for her to be swapped into a spot where she loses her number one ally in Silas, also gaining three members from the opposite tribe, putting her in a 3v3 situation where she ends up going out due to a tiebreaker in a spot where she gets taken out because of previous votes, where this is still the point where they had the previous votes tiebreaker, where again, something that screws her even more is the fact that because her enemies and T-Bird and Frank end up being swapped to the other tribe, the other tribe is able to find out that Lindsay had the votes against her, leading to Kim Johnson telling her allies where the votes are going, leading to Lindsay just being the easy person for the other side to vote for, essentially guaranteeing that she goes home. To where again, this swap is essentially a death warrant for her, with very little room to maneuver now, again, I will say the reason why she's not higher on this list is because I do think, while, again, all this was very unlucky that all this was able to happen, it's still a situation where it is Lindsay's own poor play that allowed this to happen. The fact that she burned her relationship with Teresa and Frank enough to where they were willing to leak this information that leads to her getting taken out. So again, I think that indicates poor play from her, but still poor play that shouldn't have mattered in most situations to where, considering the fact that, again, the swap was completely unexpected and she gets taken out by the entire previous votes tiebreaker. Again, it's enough for me to put Lindsay here at number 10. Now, number nine, we're moving on to a very weird case of someone getting swap screwed. One that I've talked about in the past as being a very interesting situation. One that I'm sure there'll probably be some people upset the fact that I'm even considering this being a person that's swap screwed. But at number nine, I do have Rick Devins from Survivor Edge of Extinction. And again, Rick Devins on Edge of Extinction is in a very interesting spot in the fact that he was essentially swap screwed by being swapped with the exact same people, where tribes up led to them having the exact same configuration, but actually worse in the fact that they lose their buffer in Wendy, where again, in the original Manu tribe, there were six people left, five of them in an alliance, where while David and Rick were on the bottom of that alliance, they at least had Wendy in the game as a buffer for them. Yet the swap plays out in a way that they lose Wendy and just end up being on the outright bottom of their group, which again, you can say is poor play, because obviously they had the chance to flip the vote at the Chris vote and actively chose to not do so, to where Again, obviously they had the opportunity to turn things around, but again, the reason why they don't do that and they do vote out Chris is because they realized that the swap was happening and they didn't think that they would be swapped into the exact same group as who would expect that. To where again, it was meant to be a move that would bond them to the other members of their tribe to the point where they would have more incentive in sticking together post-swap, it actually, again, works to their detriment as they get swapped into the exact same configuration. Where, again, I think that is such an unlucky circumstance. Now, I will say, the reason why Rick is not higher here is because he at least had David there as a potential boot for this round, where, while I do think at the end of the day, again, Rick was someone that was looked at as a bigger threat because he thought he was more willing to work with the other side over David, who didn't have many options. So I think that is, again, a little bit of him being unlucky, by David's reputation, but still, I do think, again, the fact that there was this other option is enough to not make him the most screwed player ever, but definitely a very unlucky circumstance that puts him here at number nine. Now, number eight, we're probably getting to was one of the most notorious situations that someone getting swap screwed. The one that I don't actually think is as bad as some people claim, but again, it's still bad enough to be at this high on the list, but at number eight, I do have Marcus from Survivor Gabon. And Marcus is a weird case here in the fact that, obviously, yes, he gets a very unfortunate swap. He gets a swap where most of his main allies are on the other side. So again, that is very unlucky. It makes me mad the fact that, again, this was a swap after they had thought that they were merged. And, and that, again, leads to him throwing away an idol that he could have utilized to save himself here. Again, all that is very bad. But again, essentially, had the game won... Had the swap gone another way, had he been able to survive this round and keep his numbers for falling round, he probably goes on to win the game. Trey, again, he gets a pretty unfortunate swap to where he has three people directly against them in Kenny and Crystal, all while Susie is in the middle. Though, I think that brings to the, again, the bigger flaw of all this and the fact that I do think he does mishandle Susie. Again, he does have a connection to Susie through the previous tribe swap and doesn't really end and isn't able to utilize that to his benefit. Along with that, I also think he gets kind of fortunate in the fact that he actually had an outside of the game connection to Crystal that I think he could have utilized to keep him in the game yet fails at doing so to where, again, I think there are things to point out here. Again, 
Marcus again, could have done better at or had opportunities that I think, again, in some of the top, top cases, these people just simply don't have those things. Where, you know, while I do think he gets very screwed in the sense that he gets sniped out of the game in a position where this was pretty much one of the only ways he could go out, I do still, again, think there is some poor play within that that makes him not higher on this list, which is the reason why Marcus is here at number eight. Now, number seven, we're moving on to someone that, through this person being on the list, it kind of spoils a certain other person on the list, though that one should have been very apparent. Where well, this is kind of just the same thing as that person, but a bit lesser. But at 15, we do have Sharia from Survivor China. And again, Sharia is someone that doesn't get talked that much about as being someone that is swap screwed. You usually see her counterpart as someone that is commonly talked about. However, again, like Sharia also gets very screwed. I mean, the entire notion of how this swap occurs is just so ripe for swap screwing. Obviously, it's the situation where you are handpicked by the opposing tribe for you to join them, which is essentially giving you a death sentence, it's essentially picking you for you to be fodder if they ever go to tribal. Now, again, it's another one of these situations where at least there was Frosty there. Again, she had another out potentially if she had been able to save herself over Frosty, but still, I mean, definitely a very unfortunate circumstance, especially when you add in all the, like, wonkiness that was going on, and the fact that James is trying to throw the challenge, all oh, the opposite side, all oh, the other Zan Hus had this plan to throw the challenge that they don't end up going through with, which, to be fair, part of that is because of Sharia's own poor play and not communicating well with them, though, to be fair, that also would put a bigger bullseye on her back, but again, I think it's still a very unfortunate circumstance. It's one where, again, she's handpicked by the opposing tribe to be fodder in the case they ever lose a challenge throw while she had an out and taking out frosty and it's still a situation where she's pretty screwed here where again that's enough for her to be here number seven now number six again we have her counterpart we have aaron from survivor china who again is commonly talked about as one of the most swap screwed players and again he is for sure again he is handpicked by the other side to be a target here in a spot where he was in a pretty dominant position on the original Fei Long tribe, some of that could have potentially run a good chunk of the game had this not occurred. However, I do think there are a couple points here that, again, keep him out of the top five here, particularly the fact that, again, one, he had James there, obviously as his backup, again, someone that he could have taken out instead of him, but also... Part of the reason why he does go home here is due to his own poor play, where he was being a bit cagey and made himself come off as the bigger threat, as opposed to James, where, again, James was the initial target, only for him to swap that because of Aaron's own poor play, which, again, enough to keep him out of the top five, though I will say in comparison to Sharia, I think his is worse in the fact that he gets swapped for his own tribe immediately decides to throw the challenge to take him out, which obviously just further shows how screwed he was and the fact that he was picked as this dead man walking and wasn't given any chance of saving himself through the challenge. So where, again, I think Aaron is definitely very, very screwed. I think there are these minor redeeming aspects here that keep him out of the top five for me. Now, number five, we're moving back to a player from a season that we've already talked about. And again, just simply talking about this person as a player that got screwed over by Swap, not them as a person. At number five, we do have Silas from Survivor Africa. And obviously, Silas was the first ever victim to the tribe Swap. Someone that was the first ever person that was Swap screwed. And I think it's kind of understated how screwed he actually was here. Again, he's in this spot where he is Swap with his enemies again literally saw both t-bird and frank to where again while there is poor play and obviously him burning them to begin with the fact that he is swapped solely with them to the opposing tribe is very unlucky there again with this also being the first swap again that was not really a foreseen thing that could even happen but to make matters worse the tribe then proceeds to throw the challenge to take him out so again i think that's what for me makes him worse than aaron again while aaron again also had the tribe throwing the challenge to take him out aaron again at least had james as his backup silas has no backup here again he has no other real option once they throw the challenge again both t-bird and frank instantly flip and there's no one on his side that would even be this potential other option to take out to where obviously i guess he should have tried to put the vote on t-bird and frank which he does try to do and it's like again, it was just never going to be effective to where i do think he was pretty screwed again i think he was in this non-winning position at this point i think it was very difficult for him to survive through this to where again when ethan this player that preaches on honor and loyalty ends up throwing the challenge to take you out i think it's pretty clear how screwed you really were to where again i think silas is kind of understatedly screwed in this spot to where again ends up leading to him being here number five 
Now, number four, and now we're getting to, again, the most screwed players by a swap. These are all people that, from this point forward, I don't think these people did much wrong to cause their eliminations. I think they just simply were screwed considering the configuration that they were given with no real outs due to how the board was laid out. And at number four, we're starting that off with one of the best players of all time. And here we do have Parvati from Survivor Winners at War. And again, Parvati from Winners at War here was just in a unwinnable situation. Again, she gets swapped over into a minority in pretty much every single front. Again, she is in a minority in terms of starting tribe. She only has Michelle in that light. She's also in a minority in the sense that her entire tribe had a pregame alliance excluding her, which is also really bad. And mixing out the fact that she is also obviously this massive target on the board, someone that was just, again, primed to be taken out in this spot where she has none of her allies. Again, it is a really terrible position she is in to where I don't know how she gets out of this. I don't think there is a single way she gets out of this or i guess the best case scenario would be her pulling over yule due to their cook islands connection even then again i don't believe they were friends post show to where again at best she gets michelle and even then michelle knew she was going home and only wanted a fire token again she had no one on her side in this swap and again when everyone else had a pre-game alliance excluding you it's such a damning position to be in so again i don't think she had that many outs though again i think she at least had more options and that she could have done more things or while I don't think those things would have been effective I think there are at least more possibilities of things she could at least attempt to try to get out of this but again it's still a pretty non-winning position that leaves her here number four now number three someone that I initially actually expected to be potentially the number one pick on this list someone that was just so screwed once she got swapped over into that configuration someone that was just an obvious instant out and that person is Sandra from Survivor Game Change Changers. Or again, obviously this is a spot where Sandra was the biggest target on the board coming into this season. Again, she was the two-time winner that was coming back for her third time to where everyone just wanted to be the person that took Sandra out and get that claim to their name to where again sandra was just such a prime person to be taken out after a swap yet she actually gets a pretty fortunate first swap again she swapped into a majority alongside most of her allies that gets her through that first swap only for her to get to a second swap where she is the opposite all she has is jeff varner there again she's pretty much a dead man walking there along with the fact that her tribe also throws the immunity challenge to take her out which is even more egregious there to where again sandra had no real outs in that spot i do think it was a spot where she was pretty screwed from the moment that she stepped on that tribe to where again without any chance of winning the immunity challenge and no allies outside of Jeff Varner there was really not much she could really do considering her out of the game reputation yet I will say the reason why she's not higher on this list is because I do feel like the other two situations are actually even more obscure situations situations that are just so unlikely to happen to where I think they get more screwed by how random the swap ends up being well I feel like for Sandra again while this was a very bad swap this is really how most swaps occur again I think she actually got a very fortunate swap to begin with and her first swap to where that didn't happen right away to where while it is again a very unfortunate swap I feel like most swap configurations for her on game changers lead to this i feel like with the next two people we'll be talking about they just got very very unfortunate how the swap plays out at all i mean that's the reason why sandra's not number one here even though again i think sandra's potentially the most screwed over by the time that the swap configurations were solidified i do feel like sandra gets swapped in this style of position more so than the next two people which is enough to put her here at number three now number two again the number two most swap screwed player of all time ends up being a legend of the game but before the they were one and that is kelly wentworth from survivor san juan del sur and again i think kelly is understatedly one of the most swap screwed players of all time on this season where again this is just a very surreal situation to be in it's one where she is on a blood versus water season with her dad her dad who is a pretty bad player and a really bad social player in particular where again she goes from being one of the top people in the hunapu power structure again actually being jeremy's loyal number one ally at that point in the game even over natalie to being swapped without any of her allies both Natalie and Jeremy are on the other side. The people from her original tribe that she swapped with are Missy and John, who are closer to each other than they were to her, along with her being with Keith, someone she doesn't have much of a connection with, all while she is now with her dad, who is a terrible player, and also her other original tribe members are with their loved ones now. So through John and Missy just organizing their loved ones together, they have an outright majority right away. And considering, again, the poor play from her dad and the fact that he picks a fight with Missy and Baylor, it just really sinks her game. To where, again, she becomes this easy target to take out here. Now, 
I will say the reason why she is not the number one pick is because, again, there were other potential boots. Again, they could have taken out Dale if they wanted to. They could have taken out even Keith, theoretically. And there were more outs technically here. Yeah, it's also, again, just a very tough position to be in where she's being so screwed by the blood versus water dynamic in this season. And it's essentially put in the spot where her main way of surviving this round is to actually vote out her dad and pin the votes against him, which obviously while we've seen like Sierra vote out her mom, again, I think it's pretty unlikely for Kelly to do that in this instance to where, again, I do think she is pretty screwed over. Again, it's a very unlikely situation to happen to where again, she is with her dad and also all these other potential allies for her are also with their loved ones. Well, also her dad, again, just burns her relationships to where again, I think she gets very unlucky in how this swap tribe plays out. But I think there's one person who's screwed a bit more to where, again, Kelly ends up landing here at number two. And now at number one, the most swap screwed player in all of Survivor is someone that I'm not endorsing this person as a person. Again, this is purely them being swapped, screwed in the game of Survivor. At number one, I do have Anna Kate from Survivor Co. Wrong. And I, again, I think how screwed over Anna Kate was on Co. Wrong kind of gets forgotten about over time, especially because, I mean, in fact, that obviously people don't like Anna Kate nowadays and, and rightly so. But she essentially gets swapped into the worst possible situation she could possibly be in. So again, she was in the dominant position on her original beauty tribe. She was in the center of everything, at the top of the power structure, only to get swapped in a position where she is now in an outright minority. Again, a spot where there are three brains, two beauties, one brawn, meaning that the three brains are obviously just going to target one of the beauties. However, the beauties on her tribe are her and Ty. For through that, again, you can claim that, okay, Anna Kate, again, simply didn't bond enough with her tribe, and that's why she was targeted there, where Ty did better social work, which again, fair. But the other thing to take into account here is the fact that Julia was on Exile Island, meaning that Julia replaces whoever they vote out, which, in the case that they vote out Scott Pollard or Ty, again, someone other than Anna Kate, meaning in the instance where they vote out someone other than Anna, that means that they're now giving Anna another ally in a spot where, again, had they vote out Scott Pollard, which also would have been a potential option in the sense that he's the odd man out, if they do that, they're essentially giving the beauties 3v3 in the following round. And even if they vote out someone like Ty, again, it's giving Anna this very solid ally for a following round. And again, straight up, it ends up being a 3v3 the following round anyway. But obviously, it's not the optimal move to be keeping around Anna in a spot where if you keep her around, she's going to be given her number one ally in the game to where everyone knew that was her number one ally in the game where it essentially makes her a dead man walking it puts her in a spot where she is just so obviously the target in this spot where she's just in this outright minority with no real chance to save herself to where again there's not really any logic in not voting out anna kate in this spot where it feels like their hands are essentially forced into voting her out because of the fact that Julia is being taken in. And considering that fact, again, there's not really much of a way for her to get out of this. Where again, there's no way that the brains don't vote for her. It makes no logical sense for them to not do so. To where again, the other option would be for her to cause a tie by getting Scott and Ty on board. But again, why would they do that when they're just going to get a tie the following round anyway? Where again, the only other option at that point is Ty's idol. To which again, I guess you can criticize her for not having Ty play his idol idol on her but again why would Ty waste his idol on her when it's not even that integral in keeping her in as again worst comes to worst they just vote out Julia next and Ty gets to merge with his idol or again I just think Anna Kate was just so screwed in this instance so again the fact that Julia in particular is a person on exile and she is put in this outright minority in a spot where people didn't want to reunite her and Julia again it just puts her in this unwinnable situation here I don't think there is a proper way out of this outside of her being able to convince people to do something that is so against their best interests to where again, in comparison to Kelly, I think there were more options for Kelly. I think Kelly could have potentially saved herself by throwing her dad under a bus. You know, that wasn't that likely she was going to do it, but again, it would have been a pretty easy way for her to survive there. Even before that, again, we have the likes of Sandra and Party, who, again, got unfortunate swaps, but again, were massive targets on the board, where, again, I think the situation that they got swapped into was just a pretty likely situation. Again, every other player beyond that has this, like, saving grace that they could have potentially had, despite how unlikely it is. So, where, again, I think Anna Kate, again, is this person who, there is no real out here. He is essentially doomed on this try with the notion that Julia is coming back into the game, which in itself is very unlucky, that it's Julia in particular that is that person, to where, to where again, I I think Anna Kate is the most screwed over player by a swap in Survivor history to where because of that for me, Anna Kate is here at number one. Well, that, there we go. I mean, that is my top 10 most swap screwed players in Survivor history. I'm moving forward. Obviously, I'll continue to do Survivor videos like this. Somehow still have a billion ideas that we'll eventually get to. But for now, that's the video. Thank you for watching.